in a nutshell, the uh, Facebook API is a big uh, key value store. Um, so if you type like in your web browser, graph.facebook.com slash whatever username, it'll return back JSON. So this is my profile, this is what's publicly accessible about me. So I'll give you my name, uh, what language I speak, my gender, a link to my uh, profile page, and then uh, my Facebook ID. Um, and that's kind of the canonical reference for my uh, Facebook account. And then the other thing that you can do uh, without ever authenticating on the Facebook platform or doing anything is you can get a picture. Um, and this works, each, uh, each person or event or page has a Facebook ID and you can just type graph.facebook.com slash ID or their username um, and then type picture. Um, and you can get a whole bunch of different sizes and so you can put that into a website. Um, so to create your app, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go to facebook.com slash developers um, and it's gonna give you a screen like this. You just click create new app. It's gonna have you type in a CAPTCHA uh, and some info and it's broken. Um, but luckily I have an app already set up. Um, so once you create your app, it's gonna pull you into a screen that looks like this where you can set up your settings. Um, so for our demo app, I put in uh, a name, a namespace, which is uh, basically like your app's uh, username. So mine was uh, facebook.com slash breadwire. My app is gonna be Iowa Startup Calendar, so it's gonna be apps.facebook.com slash Iowa Startup Calendar, or um, it's used in a couple other places. Uh, and then you're gonna put in a domain name. I just have a domain that I use for testing some things. Uh, and then you're gonna go down here. Um, if you wanted to create an actual app um, within the Canvas, so that's, if you go to like Farmville, you'll see the Facebook bar at the top um, and the ticker along the right side, you fill in this section that says app on Facebook. Um, it's, it's basically the same sort of thing um, I didn't buy an SSL certificate, so I can't do that with this test app. Um, so what I'm just going to do is use my own domain. I just typed in a URL here. Um, it's going to redirect anybody who comes into my app to um, this external URL. Um, and then there's a bunch of other settings that you can set over here. Um, you can put your app in the App Center, which is like basically like the App Store for Facebook. Um, you can take Facebook payments if you're on Canvas. Um, so that'd be like Facebook credits. It's the equivalent of Apple's in-app payments. Um, you can do real-time updates. Um, in Hatchlands, we use this uh, to invalidate our cache when people's friends lists change. So uh, instead of pinging Facebook servers all the time, you can set it up so that they'll ping you when something changes. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of migrations and, and other sorts of things. There's a lot of good documentation for this on developers.facebook.com, um, but I'm not going to have time to go through all of it. Uh, so Basically, the reason you create an app is so that you can authenticate users um, and get more information than just their basic stuff. Um, so the coolest tool to use um, is one that put, that's put out by Facebook, and it's called Graph API Explorer. Um, so if you Google it, it's the first thing that comes up. And what this is gonna allow you to do is basically have a sandbox for um, all of your development and testing and stuff. Um, so you can see here, I've authorized, they have an application and I've clicked accept to their terms of service and authorized it to access my information. Um, and that's basically what your app is, is there to do. It's, it's to say, I'm this person and person X wants to give my application the rights to view their data. Um, and so the way that they handle that is through OAuth. Um, and so they'll return back an access token that looks like this. And that lets you do some things, some cool things right off the bat, even if you don't give it any explicit permissions. So now you'll see if I go to, uh, uh, graph.facebook.com slash Brad Dwyer um, with this access token. Instead of that stuff that I got before that was just my name and the link and the language I, I uh, speak, it gives me stuff like hometown, my location, the quotes that are on my Facebook profile, who my employer is, favorite teams, a whole bunch of other stuff, um, what my time zone is. Um, and the, the, the data that you get back is uh, it's controlled by what you request. Um, so if I go back up here and click get access token, this is kind of a, their API to what you'd be doing in your code. Um, these are the types of things you can request. So I could, I could ask my users to get their email address or I could get their relationship status or I could ask something like, I wanna know what pages your friends like or what your friends' birthdays are. Um, and then there's some other things that are a little bit more advanced that are extended permissions. And that's if I wanna do things like, uh, creating an event on your behalf or RSVPing for an event, um, reading through your Facebook inbox, um, reading statistics about any apps that you own. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. Um, and 
likely if it's anything interesting, you're going to need a permission for it. Um, if it's anything that's beyond, you know, the, the simple, here's what I like, here's what's on my Facebook profile type of stuff. Hey, Brett? Yep. Have you found that asking people, there's a certain amount of things that you can ask people for where they start getting saying, well, that's way too much information. The, the sweet spot? Yeah, the less the better. Um, actually, so these extended permissions are going to pop up a second dialogue. Um, so you're gonna, you have the, the dialogue that you're familiar with whenever you open a Facebook app, and that'll come up and it'll say, they're requesting your email, they're requesting you know, this stuff. Uh, if you want any of these permissions, after they click accept, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna give them the option to explicitly opt out of one of these. Um, and actually, there have been some studies that have been done that the, the retention on those is pretty low. So the less you ask for, the better. Uh, we don't have any hatchling numbers of A-B tests to share, but, um, Intuitively, you'd expect the same sort of thing. So we don't ex ex request any extended permissions. Um, we just request, I think, the email um, and then the default information and then uh, something called publish actions, which is what lets you do Facebook open draft stuff, which is one of their newer features that um, it's like a structured data uh, store that it's, lets you do some cool things without explicit user permission. Um, so you can see if I, if I take the email permission and I click get access token, it's going to change this token up here after it asks me. Um, and then you'll see that if I then request my own data again, my email that I have associated with Facebook is going to be returned somewhere down here. Um, so to give you a little bit of clarity about what this is actually doing, um, it's probably best to show you that same API from before. <coughs> So I took this access token, I just copy and pasted it from here, and now I'm going to go to graph.facebook.com slash Brad Dwyer like I did before, and then I can just paste question mark access token equals, and then that string that I copied, and I have to do each um, And then it'll return back all this information. So. Um, on a very simple level, that's what the quote, Facebook API is. It's um, a way of getting these access tokens, managing permissions, and then getting data out of the, the Facebook graph, uh, which is their data store. Um, so basically what we're going to do now, uh, unless anybody has any questions about that stuff, is uh, take the Iowa startup calendar, um, which is, I just pulled this from their RSS feed. Um, it's just titles and descriptions, super simple. And uh, we're going to create an app for this and socialize it. Um, so this is the app that I created before, and this is the, the URL down here. Um, you'll notice what we have up here. Um, so I've kind of created a framework for it. Um, I've got all the stuff that we're going to need for the calendar portion of it. Um, so we're just going to go through uh, adding the, the Facebook components to it. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is a little bit of copy pasta that you're going to take from Facebook. Um, it's in their documentation. Um, and we're going to do all this in JavaScript. There's not going to be any back end. Um, so I have this copy and pasted from my clipboard, and I'm going to paste it in here. Um, and so what this code does is it's going to initialize your application. So you're going to pass it in a couple of values. Um, the first one here is going to be your app ID. And uh, actually, this is the wrong code. This is step two. This is second. So the first code you're going to do is to import the, uh, the JavaScript API so that you're going to have access to all their methods. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're just downloading from Facebook servers a JavaScript file that's going to get included in your website. Um, and then this is the only custom thing. This, everything else besides this one line that I just pasted in is um, actually included in the developer documentation. It's completely standard. Um, what this line that I added does is it says once this is done loading, we're going to call this JavaScript function, which is what I was calling before. Um, so it's, it's just going to call my social class, it's going to call a method called start. Um, so if I save that, and then I'm going to go to uh, a JavaScript file that I included called social.js that I've cleared out of everything that I want. And this is where your uh, second copy and paste is going to go. Um, this is also in the developer documentation. Um, before you do anything with the JavaScript API, you're going to have to op have to uh, initialize it. Uh, you're just going to pass it your uh, Facebook app ID, uh, and then a couple of values of what parts of the API you want to use and what you want to initialize it with. So here, um, 
I passed it my app ID, which is what I got when I created my developer application, or my application in the developer panel. Um, I'm going to pass it a channel URL, which is used for, I think, IE7 and 8 um, to do cross-domain requests. Uh, and then I'm going to pass a couple of other things. Um, I'm going to check their login status. So when somebody comes to my page, it's going to tell me whether they're logged into my app or logged into Facebook or neither. Um, it's going to set that in a cookie so that the next time they come back, it doesn't have to ping Facebook. Um, it's going to include something called XFBML, which is a superset of uh, HTML. So you're going to be able to do things like put in FB colon name as an HTML tag, and it'll parse that out as somebody's Facebook name. Um, and there's really not a whole lot of tags that are still supported. Um, it's kind of a remnant of what they did before, but it's just kind of a, a shorthand way of calling certain data from the API and displaying it. Are you going to deprecate that anytime? Um, they, had, they said that they're not going to deprecate XFML. They deprecated regular FBML. Um, but this is all through their JavaScript API, so there's no parts of this needed to be done. Um, so hopefully not. Um, but the platform changes really rapidly, so you never know. Okay. Uh, and then friction re list requests is something we're going to be using a little bit later. It's going to allow us to uh, send requests to people. So if you ever re receive like a gift in a game or um, like an invite to an inv to a event, it's, it's using requests, and Frictionless is going to say, uh, it's going to provide them a check checkbox where the next time they send to somebody, they're not going to have to approve it. They just approve it the first time, and the next time it'll be um, frictionless. Um, and then we're going to call this, which is a function that we're going to create next. Um, and it's kind of just a shorthand. Um, it's kind of a, a wrapper around a Facebook method, but since we're going to use it several times um, with the same response codes, um, I figured I'd wrap it around, wrap it with this function. Um, so what we're going to do is create that. Here we go. All right. So we've just created this function that we're going to be able to pass two functions to. One of them we're going to call if they are logged into Facebook, and one of them we're going to call when they're not logged into Facebook. So now we've called a uh, Facebook function. This is part of their API. And this is doing the same sort of thing. It's going to return back a response to us. And within that response is going to be some data that's going to tell us whether the person is A, either not logged into Facebook or our application, B, logged into Facebook but not, our, not connected to our application, or C, one of our own users. Um, and then. So we're going to check that response, and if that response is connected, this is going to mean that they have already authorized our application. So we're just going to, right now, put in a filler and say, hi, you're connected. So otherwise, we don't care if they're logged into Facebook or not. Um, we're just going to provide them with a login screen if they haven't authorized our application. So if they are not connected, we're going to do something else, which is we are going to show them a login button. And I have this already pretty done. So we're going to show them a login button, and if they passed a, if they passed a call back, which we did, which was initializing our calendar, we're going to call that at the end. So here we're going to add, we're going to remove a style sheet that we're going to add later. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, um, but it will. We're going to hide the login button, button if it's shown, and we're going to, or the log out button if it's shown. That should be log out button. And then we're going to show the login button, and then when they click, we're going to call a function that we're going to write that's called uh, social dot login. So if I save this right now, it should upload to that page that we had before, and I'm going to open it in an incognito window so that I'm not logged into Facebook. And if we did this right, it will show, show this login button. Ah. 
So I call this the wrong thing. So fingers crossed it's going to work this time. Yep, so it's just going to show us the login button and it's going to show us all this sort of stuff. Um, so we're not logged into Facebook right now um, and I'm going to show you guys basically what you can do in your app before they've, uh, before they've authorized it. So in my calendar.js file, I've commented out these, these lines of code. Um, and so what this is going to do, I've already pre-populated some stuff in the database. Um, so this is just going to show the data um, that we're just going to call through those graph API methods without an access token. So this time when it shows up, it's going to show that these people are already attending these events. It's going to populate the, these RSVP buttons that won't do anything yet because we haven't wired them up. Um, and it's going to, if somebody was logged in right now they, and RSVPing or un thing, they'd be showing up here. Um, so what I've done is this RSVP button um, is going to call a social uh, function and, and that's not called right, that's not defined right now. So we're going to create our um, social.login function that's going to, when they click that, we're going to log them into Facebook and make them connect with our application. So I've created this social.login function that's going to get called. Um, and basically, it's another sort of thing where it's just a wrapper to a Facebook function, but I don't want to be passing the values every time. Um, so we're just going to call fb.login, which is their login method. And when you're logged in, it's going to reply back um, with a response um, that we are just going to pass back to this respond to login status. Um, and then the second thing it takes is a scope, and that's what we talked about earlier on the Graph API Explorer, where you can request things like email address or extended permissions. Um, for this app, we don't really need them, um, but just kind of as a standard thing because they go on the first uh, window. Um, at some point, I would expect that we'd want to email our users, um, and we might want to use Open Graph in the future. Um, so that, so I included those so that later, when we, if we ever add those features, those people don't have to accept these permissions again. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste this so I don't screw it up. All right. So this is what our final social.login function is going to look like. We're going to pass it two callbacks, um, and it doesn't matter what happens, we're going to call. Um, if they click cancel, we're going to call um, old one again, uh, but we're not passing that in. So now if I do this, um, it's going to come back up here, and it should say, once I click OK, it'll log me into Facebook, and then it'll call our alert, um, because it's going to come back up to this respond to login status function. Um, and this time we're going to be connected, so we're going to put up an alert that says, hi, you're logged in. So if I come back here, reload the page, click either RSVP or login with Facebook, it's going to call that login function. It's going to ask me to log in. And then returns back and says, hi, you're connected. So now I'm connected to this app. So we're going to go back in and we're going to uh, rewrite that portion. Um, instead of just saying, hi, you're logged in, we're going to do something useful. So, and again, I'm going to copy this from the completed stuff so I don't screw it up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to set our Facebook ID internally and our access token, which is going to get returned by this response function if you're connected. Um, so it's going to be response to that auth token. That user ID is going to be my Facebook ID. And response.authresponse.access token is going to be that token that I was passing to the Graph API earlier to get information about my user. Um, and then I'm going to include a style sheet um, that I have some uh, styles for stuff that should only be displayed if they are connected. Um, that's before when I said we were removing a style sheet that we hadn't added yet. 
Um, if they log out, we want to remove that so that anything that is uh, reliant upon them being connected goes away. Uh, then we're going to hide the login button, show the logout button, and then tie that to a function that we haven't created um, that's going to log you out of Facebook. And then we're going to call your uh, callback function so that it continues on with its operation. Um, so the reason you want to have a callback like this is um, over here, this uh, RSVP, actually if you're not logged in, it'll call that login function with a callback. Um, and so it'll wait for you to complete your login process. And then when you're done logging in, it'll continue on and RSVP you for the event so you don't get kind of lost in the flow. Um, it's kind of a routine thing in JavaScript, but if you're not really familiar with JavaScript, it might look a little weird. Um, so let's test this. So I'm connected now, so if I refresh, refresh the page, I now am connected and I have a logout button, and ideally, so I renamed that callback the wrong thing again. Cool, so my style sheet now that I've uh, included because I'm connected, has shown me the invite and share buttons that we're going to hook up later. And it's noticed that I've already RSVP'd to this event, so um, I'm passing back Facebook IDs from the database. Um, and so it knows so I can un-RSVP or re-RSVP if I want to. Um, that'll update on real time. So if you guys have your phones right now, you can log on to this app and see things updating in real time with your Facebook credentials. Um, it would be nicer if you had Wi-Fi to do it. Um, so basically what we're going to do now, um, so we've connected, we have an, an access token, so now we can start doing cool things. So if I open the console, I can do something like fb.api, which we'll call, basically call the graph API with the token. And I can go, I can call me, and then so this is how you would call the information about the currently logged in user. I just call Facebook.api, the, the me is a shorthand for currently logged in user. Um, it's going to return a response. If I log that out, you can see that all of my stuff from Facebook is returned. So some other things that you can do is, uh, and I was going to do this for the demo, but I didn't have time to get it, get it out this morning. Um, if I want to see my list of friends on Facebook, for example, if I wanted to highlight them on the left-hand side or, or do something like that, I could do me slash friends. And that's going to call my callback with a list of all my friends on Facebook. Uh, and by default, it's going to give me their name and, and Facebook ID. Um, but I could request other things like if they had the application installed if I wanted to. Um, and that's all documented in the Graph API um, section of the documentation. Um, so now what we're going to do is uh, the other, so besides requesting data, the other thing that is useful about Facebook is that you can get virality by posting data back to Facebook. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook up this invite button, which is uh, tied to requests. Um, and then we're going to hook up the share button, which is going to post on your Facebook profile page and go to your friends' streams. Um, so the invite dialog, um, that's going to um, call a method called fb.ui, which is going to pop up your standard selector of friends. Um, and that's all done by Facebook, basically. Um, all you have to do is put a wrapper around it. Um, so I've got a method that, I, that this calls. If I click the in, invite button, it's going to call um, social.invite, which we haven't defined yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So I've created the social.invite button. It's going to take two uh, values. It's going to take a message, which is going to get sent to the user, and it's going to take any additional data that I want to tag. Um, so what I'm going to use this for is on the additional data, I'm going to call an event ID so that when they're pulled back in, I have the event that they were associated with so then they can go ahead and get RSVP to that event. Um, and so then I'm just going to call this method called fb.ui, which the method um, part is going to tell it that I want to do a request rather than posting to a wall, or um, you can also pop up things like payments dialogs or other stuff like that. Um, it's Facebook's standard way of saying, I want to pop up a Facebook modal dialog that does something. Um, it's going to take two things. It's going to take message and data, um, which I'm going to pass in the stuff that that I passed from the RSVP button. So if I refresh the page over here, 
Once this loads, I should be able to invite somebody. So if I click invite, that's going to call the fb.ui method. It's going to load my list of friends. My page is kind of small, so let me zoom it out. Um, I'll be able to select people. If I select, it's, uh, Brett has already off the application. So I send him an invite, and he should actually receive a message on his phone right now, and it should go on his Facebook notifications up here. Um, so that would have like an invite to this application. Um, Matthew. There's Matthew. <laughs> uh, and so that's good. If he clicks that, he'll come into the application, and I'll be passed the data value. Um, we're not doing anything with that because it's a little complicated to parse it out. Um, but it will provide a, an ID of that request. You're going to do a fb.api call to pull information about the request, and then we'll be able to get our data back. We'll be able to say, all right, cool, you were invited to this event, you clicked accept, so we're going to RSVP you back to that event. Um, so now the next one that we're going to do is the share dialog, um, which is very similar. It's just going to call fb.ui with a different, uh, with a different uh, parameter um, that's going to call it, cause it to post to your Facebook feed instead of to requests. Um, so I have this one as well. So I did social.share. I'm going to pass it a title, a description, and a URL where it's going to point to. Um, so I'm going to basically pass that right onto Facebook. Um, and do Methodist feed this time. Um, that's your Facebook news feed, or it used to be mini feed. Um, it's going to pass it the link, which is where it's going to go to. It's going to pass the picture. I just have that hard coded in right now. The title you'll see in a second is the link text. It's going to have a caption that is. I'm going to hard code in here, but you can do other stuff with that. That's the second line of text that's going to go on there. And then description, uh, I found out this morning this doesn't work very well because they're passing HTML in their descriptions and you can't pass that to Facebook. Um, but theoretically, if you owned your data, you could parse it however you wanted. Um, so now I've got a share button. I click that I'm attending this event. It should pop up a share dialog. That's the name of the event. And the image didn't look for some reason. Um, so I can type something about it. Like And then I can set, this is all Facebook's dialogue. All I had to do is call fb.ui. So now if I go to my Facebook profile page, you can see that this is now posted to my, my profile page. And my friends will now see this in their news feed as they're scrolling through. Um, so it's really simple to add this sort of virality and these hooks back in. You can see that people can interact with it, comment on it, all that jazz. Um, and so that's basically the extent of the demo that I have for you guys. Um, there's a lot more stuff that you can do. Uh, I can talk about how this is real-time updating if you want. Uh, it's not really Facebook, but it's kind of a cool technology. Um, but you can see, I don't know, Brett, do you still have it open? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, if you click reneg and then rejoin a bunch of times, it'll be really instant. Because um, it's using web sockets and stuff. So, any, uh, <laughs> nice. Anybody have any questions or want me to show you anything else? Any suggestions? How did you get started? What was the first thing you were uh, Actually, I wrote, so I was working on, it's kind of a long story. Uh, I was working on a project. Uh, it was basically supposed to be like mixing uh, LinkedIn and Facebook, where you can put your resumes on your Facebook page. Um, and so I was kind of experimenting with the Facebook API. I got distracted, and on the weekend I wrote Hatchlings, uh, and that took off, and I had several hundred users the first day, and then we blew up to like 50,000 users within a couple months, and the servers crashed, and now we're five years, four and a half years later, and still working on it. So, obviously, I have a mobile perspective. Yep. Uh, this application should work. It the way should. I should. Work. I can test it. I haven't tested it, but let me open the simulator. the difference between a Canvas and a Connect application. Okay. Um, so this is a Canvas application. This is Hatchlings running on Canvas. 
the exact same code base if you just go to hatchlings2.com is running outside of Facebook. Um, so really all that the Facebook frame is is an iframe. They enclose your site and it allows you to do some other things like payments. So you can see if I click over here, I'm going to call the Facebook pay payments method on one of these. Makes it really easy to pop up a dialog, spend $100 right from there with two clicks. Um, <laughs> so if, if you're on hatchlingst.com, um, we have to go through something else. You can't call that Facebook uh, payments outside of their platform. Um, and then they're, this is going to be new in December, but they're arbitrarily changing the rules that if you're a game, you're not going to be able to do this. Not for any technical reason, but for kind of anti-competitive purposes because they don't like Zynga. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's all the same sort of thing. Um, actually. Their Facebook's mobile HTML platform is not a platform at all. You just include their JavaScript, and you're on your own domain and everything. So now, uh, again, this is sort of a newbie question. Which is a shock, but um, am I able to play Hatchlings this campus within the native iPhone app? Yes. Um, so it'll just load that within a UI web view. Um, Unfortunately, you can't take payments there at all um, because you have no access to the iOS um, payments dialog. Um, so there's no real, there's not a huge advantage to doing that other than, I can't even think of a single advantage of doing that. Um, so what we're exploring is creating our own, basically, wrapper application that's going to wrap so that then we can use JavaScript and call the Apple methods to take payments. Because if you're in, within the Facebook application, you can't take payments with Facebook credits because Apple doesn't allow it, and you can't take payments with <laughs> Apple because Facebook doesn't allow it. So, <laughs> so, is there any advantage to doing things? Is there one way you want to do the JavaScript API versus the PHP API, or vice versa? Um, I actually don't use the PHP API because it sucks. Um, if you're on PHP, what I'd recommend is just using the Graph API itself. Um, there's not a whole lot that you need to do that you can't do just by calling their REST API. Um, sorry, not REST API, their Graph API. Um, so I can, I don't know that I have any code to show, but I would, I would basically just do a curl request um, to pull Graph stuff, or you can do a post request and you can post stuff. Um, and in terms of, I guess authentication is kind of weird that way. Um, it's, it's a lot more convoluted than JavaScript, um, but it is doable. Um, I try and do as much as I can in JavaScript. It's easier to debug. Cool. Yep. What's your favorite environment for JavaScript? Chrome. Um, the Chrome Web, Chrome Web Inspector <coughs> that I've been using this uh, whole talk is actually really nice. Um, so I can go in here and I can type something like social. If I type social, it'll just return back all these methods that I've been doing. I can call things right away. I can do like fb.ui. Uh, I forget. I don't know. I can call whatever I want. You can overwrite stuff as you're, um, as you're coding. So you don't have to like re-upload stuff and refresh the page. You can just do it on the fly. Um, and then I've been using Firebase, which is really cool because we don't even, like with this app. There's no database at all. Um, it's just um, it's a Firebase URL. So all this calendar stuff, all these check-ins. Um, somebody want to check in or out on their phone to one of the events on the calendar. We'll see what it does when it updates. So yeah, it just flashed and somebody added or removed from this attendee list. Um, and it's, it's really easy. Um, it's not very secure right now, but it <laughs> makes it super easy to do this sort of real-time stuff because it's all hooked up to WebSockets. What, what are some cool Facebook stuff you see coming? I mean, you explain a lot here today, but what are some? Um, the stuff? Graph API is really cool. Uh, so actually a feature that hasn't quite been announced yet publicly that I've seen. Um, they put it in their documentation. They, announced that uh, the world hack that we were at is um, open graph stuff is going to be accessible via the API. So if I go back to here, I can maybe I can't. 
So it's not even in here yet. Um, should be though. This is similar. Um, so if I click uh, useractions.music, um, it's gonna it's basically creating an API for other applications without them having to do it. So um, I forget how to access it. I'd have to look at the documentation, but. For instance, Spotify or RDO or, what, or Pandora, if they're pushing to your uh, open graph, which most, most of them are right now, you'll be able to programmatically access like what people are listening to. So if you wanted to create like a social listening app, you don't have to have all the music. You could like say, here's what they've been listening to on Spotify, or like for you, if you wanted to recommend like here's a band that's gonna be in your area that we noticed that you're listening to on Spotify, or ten of your friends are listening to this band on Spotify, or that sort of thing. Uh, that's really cool. So it's creating an API. You're the third party apps. Yep. Yeah. You, you just said you can access individuals' friends' feeds? Um, yep. So, oh, here it is. A pop up came on the other side. Um, yeah, so there's a different action. They'll, they'll request, they'll say, hey, can I look at your friends' Spotify history or whatever? And then you'll be able to parse that data out. Um, that's a lot of the friend permissions. Um, I don't know. Has anybody explored the option of uh, getting paid to share their friends' information? Um, yeah, they got sued. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of people have been shut down. Um, and they actually, so now there's really strict rules about what you can share out of the system. Um, so they've come up with this. So if I, like, if, when I, on that third party payment platform, I have to pass them an ID, obviously, so that I know when the payment's done, they're going to pass me back, you know. All right, this user made a payment and it completed, so now you can credit them their stuff. Um, you can't even pass a Facebook ID now, so they have no way of knowing like who it actually is. So if I go to my ID, uh, um, you you request to Facebook the third party ID, and then this is all you can pass to them. And that's an app specific token, um, and so it's just it's a hash of. The ID based on the stuff so that they can't even track like this user's paid between two different applications and that sort of thing. Um, so they're being really stringent about it. You can't pass it to advertisers, you can't pass any data for targeting. You have to do all that on your own servers without ever letting it get out of the system. They have no way of tracking it, but they're pretty heavy handed if they figure out that's going to be going on. Hey, Brad, uh, changes to Facebook mobile as you see coming down the pipe. Um, so I think what he's talking about is on Facebook pages, um, you can install apps on a page. So the Hatchlings app, um, this is our, our page app, and if you go here, um, you'll be able to see like network information. We have a whole bunch of stuff, and this is like the page installed the app. Um, so they're using it for real estate listings for agents, um, Brian's using it for buying tickets from an artist. Um, I don't know if it's coming to mobile or not. I, I have no way of knowing that. Um, I'd be, I don't know, it's probably 50-50 um, whether they're gonna add that or not. Um, but I think it, it's really cool with the iOS 6 in, integration with Apple where it's where Facebook's actually built right into the operating system. Uh, and you can lo now log in, it's basically like, uh, like when an app requests your location data, and now says, "Well, can I access your can I access your Facebook data?" And you click OK without ever logging in or entering your password or whatever. It's really a secure way to log in and you know, get that Facebook information. It's pretty seamless. Uh, that looks pretty cool. So I don't know. It looks like they're going a lot more native than HTML5. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with their mobile website. And the second question is: When you built Hatchlings, when you're talking about the, the looks that you think of ahead of time. To super simple and actually the idea for the game wasn't the idea for the game, it was an idea for how to spread virally um, and then it was a game wrapped around that. So originally, I don't think I have any screenshots that I can show you, but Facebook, I don't know if you remember, like four years ago had <coughs> profile boxes, uh, nobody was using it. So like if you're, I guess I can kind of show what it's evolved into. So like this activity box could have been 
um, your top friends um, or like your fluff friends. There was like a little, you could have a pet on your page. Um, but nobody was really using it as an active part of like the application. Um, so we used that as a, a hook to get people in. So when you added the application, you got a box that had an egg on it, and any friend that clicked on the box got pulled into the application, their profile got a, a box on it. Um, and that spread incredibly rapidly because nobody else was doing it. It was, uh, it was kind of a viral channel that they didn't intend to be a viral channel, um, so it was able to spread really quickly. Um, but that, that was really the, the idea was, there's this really cool box that we can do stuff with, what can we do with it? And so that's how we built it. Cool. Well, if there's no other questions, yeah. So how far did the LinkedIn slash Facebook idea that you originally worked on before got framed by Ashland's fade out? Did it fully fade out? Or uh, I hadn't, hadn't even launched it yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was super faded. Yeah. Um, I just let the domain name expire. I always thought that would be a cool idea, but... Yep. Will you be posting the service headers anywhere? Or yeah, I can. Uh, I'll zip it up. I have the, the finished one. It's not really commented though, so uh, but yeah, I can post that. Cool. Do you want to touch Thanks on the WebSockets? Web yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was the Firebase stuff. Um, Is it Firebase in like private data right now? Yeah, uh, I can get you a beta code if you want. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we're using that for like our chat and hashlings. Um, basically what you do, if I go in here, um, I can create a Firebase reference. So so I'm just referencing a URL. Um, and then if I do f dot, what is set? I can set it to a JavaScript object. Um, so I'm going to set it to And so if I go back in here, it's added that down here as test with the value of block on high. And uh, anytime that gets changed, any client that's connected, uh, so I can subscribe to changes to that. So I can go f dot on value. So. Um, Whenever this value changes, so if I go over here and I just change this to that, if I come back in here, you'll notice that that has been pushed out to all the connected clients that are listening to that value. So now the new value is blah, X, Y, Z. Um, so it's, it's just super instantaneous of any updates. You can listen to childs being added or removed. Um, what's listening for over here is um, it's, each event has an attendee list, and every time somebody gets pushed to it or removed from it, it's going to add an element uh, based on the value that gets added or removed. Um, it was super easy. I don't have a back end for this, and I wrote it all this morning, so it <laughs> took me a fourth of minutes. So WebSockets is a spec that's been around for quite a while, but in terms of practical. Yep, and they actually fall back, um, and I, it's worked on every browser that I've tried. I know Socket.io has done a pretty good job of that in it. I've been really impressed with how well it works and um, how quickly it updates. I mean, we were we were testing it with Hatchlings. We just migrated over our notifications. Um, so when I send somebody a gift, before I can click, so we send it on our end first. We log the gift, and before I even can like see the dialog to click accept to actually send it to Facebook, they already have the notification on their screen that they have received the gift, which is pretty insane. We tried to build a live auction for the Meekum car auction. Sockets since about three years ago. The support just wasn't wide enough for the yeah. customer base because this would have solved so many Yeah, problems. it's really cool. And everything yeah, else. it's insane. We're getting rid of an entire dedicated server that was dedicated to just receiving requests for yeah. updates to these sorts of accounts. That's stuff. awesome. So you're using Firebase in production with Netflix? Um, yes. And uh, yeah, <laughs> please don't hack it. <laughs> uh, they're coming out with a with a lot of security stuff. Um, we, we're in the beta for that, but haven't actually implemented it yet. Um, so what I've heard is, so what they have now is you can say like, I want this to be only writable with a key, and then so you, only your server would have the key, and so clients could subscribe to updates, but only your server would be able to write to it. 
Uh, but I've heard they're coming out with a whole user base, um, like per user, uh, like uh, kind of like OAuth or whatever. But it would when a user writes, it would you'd have a function that would say, "Is this a valid write or not?" And you could say yes or no, um, which would be cool. Yeah. Have you heard of anybody using Firebase for like a? Totally different companies to share data with their apps because it looks like it'd be really great for that, as long as you can secure deal with privacy issues. But I mean, for certain things, you don't care. Yeah, um, I'm sure. I haven't heard. Uh, they're a brand new company there in Y Combinator, I believe. Um, okay. We just learned about them about a month ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, the application is really, I, I really like it. It's super easy to get involved in. How much do they charge for using it? I was it's a free right now. <laughs> Well, that's uh, uh, it's gonna they're gonna charge in January, but they haven't announced pricing yet. So that's interesting from a business plan point of view. It's a good way to test your server to see how much load you can handle. Yeah. 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 You said you got rid of the server you're using there. Yeah, I mean it's safe, so it's gonna save us a hundred bucks a month. So if we pay them a hundred bucks a month and it works better. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's all they're working on. Where is your working on? Right. So,